I think we should first of all be, um, I don't know if optimistic is right, to, right, quite the right word, but I think we should be confident that the level of opposition that has been demonstrated to the Providence Resources application to drill for gas and oil is having an impact. Uh, people may have noticed in the Sunday Times, uh, I think it was the last weekend, there was an article which somewhat surprised me but pleased me, where uh, it was indicated that uh, Providence's application could be in trouble. And uh, they cited objections from Dunleary Ratdale County Council. Now, in fact, the submission put in by Dunleary Ratdale County Council was pretty minimal. Uh, and fairly weak, although on a, an important subject in and of itself, uh, and that was the potential impact of uh, oil drilling and gas drilling on bird life in the uh, in Dublin Bay, and uh, the the article indicated therefore there could be difficulties with the application. Now, what I actually take from that is that the public opposition from all sorts of groups, local residents, environmental groups, uh, the hundreds and hundreds of submissions that were put in opposing the application have all had an impact. The government are very, very loath, in my experience, of these sort of things to ever admit that people power is the thing that changes their mind. Because, of course, they're afraid it sets a precedent where people power will be uh, mobilized uh, on more and more issues. So they don't want to acknowledge that people power is worrying them, uh, so they look for excuses as to why it is that they may be reconsidering their position. But I would take quite a lot of heart from that. I think it is as a direct result of the big public meetings that have been held in Dorky and Dunleary, and of the hundreds of submissions that were put in, that they are uh, somewhat concerned about the level of public opposition. So that is good. But it's not over yet by any means. And uh, I think we, we can't be uh, complacent at all. We have to show F Phil Hogan and the government that there is a very, very determined campaign of opposition uh, to this. I'm here uh, from Antashka and we oppose, we oppose this um, license on environmental grounds. Uh, firstly, the Minister for the Environment, Mr. Phil Hogan, uh, has refused, has failed to carry out a strategic environmental assessment on uh, drilling off our coast, which means that our, all these applications that come in are dealt with piecemeal. Uh, in, in short, our policy is practically non-existent. It's a mess. Uh, we oppose this on three grounds, uh, human, wildlife, and spillage possibilities. At a human level, um, this development, this uh, application is for a well six kilometers out there, which is very, very close. Other countries uh, say that you cannot have a, a, an application like that uh, closer than 25 kilometers. We're saying yes to six kilometers. It's absolutely daft. Um, there are dangers for uh, public health, there are dangers for tourism, for water sports, for fishing, uh, all of which will be affected by this application if it goes ahead. We're also concerned in Antashka about wildlife. Somebody's got to look after wildlife. Uh, they can't look after themselves. So um, we're concerned about uh, birds, uh, which would be affected, fish, and marine, uh, marine wildlife. Many of you know that uh, Donkey Island, for example, is a resting ground for the grey seal. There are dolphins, there are whales, all of which would be affected by uh, seismic investigation. Um, and coming on to the spillage aspect, which is the most frightening of all, Providence Resources, in their own submission, uh, have admitted that um, 
if there's a spill of a thousand litres of diesel oil, it would drift towards Dublin Bay and the Liffey. And the most frightening statistic of all is that that could reach Bull Island within one hour. So the proximity to the shore is a problem. The confined nature of Dublin Bay is a problem. And for those reasons, we are opposed to this development. It has not been thought out. It has not been investigated. I really think it's amazing when you look out at the sea there today, the idea that there would be a huge oil rig sticking up out there uh, for the next, definitely if he gets this for the next uh, four or five years, while millionaire, billionaire Tony O'Reilly explores, explores for oil. But certainly if he's lucky, if he's successful and he, and he claims that there's a one in four chance of being successful, it'll mean the full industrialization of that bay out there for decades to come and the absolute ruination of our bay, of our coast, of this amazing amenity that Dublin has, has to offer. And it might make some sense to people. Some people might be thinking that considering the dire economic straits we're in, that maybe if we hit oil it might just solve all our problems. But the point is that we do not stand to gain one jot from any oil exploration out there. The, Tony O'Reilly will put, and his partners in the different oil companies that he's with will pocket every cent of those profits and they won't, they won't supply one job for this country. He has said himself that uh, the workers will be flown in, flown in by helicopter onto the rig out there and they will be taking the oil out of the country to be refined if they find oil. When I uh, look at uh, the government and what they're proposing uh, the one thing that comes to mind is the tax so the people I meet on the street and ask uh, what do you feel about an oil rig I get the, the, this uh, uh, comment back wouldn't an oil rig be great if we had oil that will solve all of our problems the big issue when you when you uh, explore that a little bit further is the tax take at 25 percent now uh, again 25 percent sounds like a reasonable sum um, saying that it is a lot smaller than most other countries in, in, in the world uh, where the tax is considerably higher. Norway uh, achieved a 70% tax on all of their oil. Uh, the UK received over 50% of their oil. Um, so my concern is if we're receiving so little revenue, uh, and, and of course I should explain, the 25% is the revenue before that oil company get to write off all of their losses uh, for the, the, the previous 25 years. The reality is, and I'm no expert, so I need an expert to tell me what is the likely tax take, but I'm told it could be as little as 5%, it could be 10%, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny figure. The government say that that's the best deal we can get. So the reason we're doing deals with the likes of Provenance and other oil companies is that is the best deal. What concerns me is if that's the best deal on the books, if that's the best we can achieve for our country, and God knows we need revenue of all sorts, but if that's the best deal, in my opinion, it's a deal not worth doing. The oil will stay there and will be there. It's been there for millions and millions of years. It'll be there for another 20, 30, 40, 50, or 100 years. If the oil is there and has value, the value will continue to grow. So we are better off as a country not having that oil extracted if the deal is that bad and leave it there for, 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 for when the time is right. I don't have any real issues with our government. I'm not political. Uh, I, I believe I don't have entire trust in our government, as I'm sure a lot of people will agree. Nor do I have uh, belief in the oil companies, who is their sole agenda is to provide the information that our government report back to us. So all of the figures that we hear about, all of the figures um, about how much oil is likely, the tax, uh, how profitable that oil will be, etc., is all driven by the oil companies. The information is driven by the oil companies, and that worries me. I have a government I don't trust, and I've got information from oil companies I don't trust. I would like an independent inquiry, a public inquiry, a format where, which I can uh, believe the people who are participating. When I have those answers, I'm very happy to consider what, what role oil has in our future. The area between Dawkey Island and the Kish Bank is extremely important as a feeding area for seabirds, particularly during breeding season and autumn, June to November. We know this because the Kish is a well-studied area. Boat-based seabird surveys have been undertaken and from birds GPS tagged at their breeding colonies, e.g. most of the shags from Lambay Forage on Kish. 
South Dublin Bay is surrounded by seabird colonies, most of which hold internationally important numbers. For example, Lamb Bay, Rockabill, Ireland's Eye, Hoth Head, Dublin Port and Brayhead. Key species using the area are Manx shearwaters, these mostly originate from colonies on the Welsh islands, Gilamo, Razorbills, Shags, Roseate Terns and Common Terns. Outer Dublin Bay is important because of its areas of shallow water known as banks, the Kish, Burford and Bennett, and these are where the seabirds congregate to feed, moult and rear their young. The ecological assessments and the oil spill contingency plan produced by the exploration company are poor. The latter does not indicate an oiled wildlife response and the timing of a occurrence of most species are inaccurate. It would appear that no on-site work has been conducted by Providence prior to the announcement of the seismic survey and drilling programme. There is already a plan to build a massive wind farm on the Kish Bank. Cumulative impacts need to be taken into account in a strategic environmental assessment for the Greater Dublin Bay area. The proposal seems somewhat hurried. Yes, we Ireland need to find and utilise new sources of energy, but proper safeguards for the environment need to be put in place. And that was written by Dr Newton, who is a senior conservation officer. Um, in Birdwatch Ireland. I just want to start off by asking you how much information do you actually need on this issue? I mean, from the very start I got involved with it because I I suppose I just listened to my tummy, really. I kind of, I heard oil rig, six kilometres, Dorky Coast, and I said, okay, that doesn't sound like a good idea. But then after a while, after you get involved in the campaign and you start in you know, making meetings, you have people throwing so much information at you and it's, you start to wonder, well, you know, what side do I take and how, how do I make a decision on this? And really, there's so much information that, that you could go into. You could go into the legalities of it. You could go into how much money could we make? And fair enough, you could change the terms. You could make it 80% for the Irish government, but would it matter? Six kilometres is too close. It doesn't matter if it's a hundred percent take for the Irish government. It doesn't matter if it's 10 billion every day. Six kilometres is bad practice for oil drilling. Whoa!